Our lesson today is entitled Bold Faith, and it comes out of the book of Daniel, third chapter, verses 19 through 28. Again, our lesson is entitled Bold Faith. Sunday School Lesson, January 14, 2018, and my name is Tony Miller. So we've been in a number of lessons uh, in this series of lessons that, that are about faith and, and faith is a complete trust and confidence in someone or something that restores one's faith in politicians or it could not just have to be politicians, strong faith in God or in doctrines, religion based on spiritual apprehension uh, rather than proof, a system of re uh, religious beliefs that that it's not science, uh, it's, it's something that we believe in the heart of our hearts that is something that, that we don't have to have as proof of. Uh, faith is a feeling, a conviction, a belief that something is true or real without having evidence. Uh, I don't have to know that gravity works, but if I drop this ball, it's going to go to the ground. I, I, don't, I don't have to get in the plane and know about aerodynamics, but I know if I get in the plane, it takes off, or I turn the light switch on, or I don't have to know about about clouds and and wind and all those things i, I just have the, i believe that that if i do this action it's going to have this reciprocal response and faith is taking the first steps even when you don't even see the whole staircase it's like it's 12 o'clock at night and it's night and you hear a noise and you walk down the stairs you don't have to know that there's a next stair that you're stepping down onto that's what faith is you believe that it's there faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. Amen. So the aim of this lesson is to explore the connection between the faith, the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and their deliverance from the fiery furnace, and the value of their faith, commitment, and identify situations that call for faith during persecution. So this book of Daniel, the introduction to the book of Daniel, identifies the prophet Daniel as its author, and the writings of this book of Daniel is, was likely written between 540 and 530 BC. And the purpose of this writing in 605 BC, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had conquered Judah and deported many of its inhabitants to Babylon, Daniel included, and Daniel served in the royal court of Nebuchadnezzar and several rulers. Uh, several rulers who followed Nebuchadnezzar and the book of Daniel records the actions, prophecies, and visions of this prophet Daniel. So in summary, the summary of this book of Daniel this is a brief, uh, I'm going to give you a summary of just chapter one, two, and three, because that's all we're going to go. We're going to be in Daniel for a few more weeks uh, following this lesson. So chapter one describes the conquest of Jerusalem by the Babylonians, along with the many with many others and Daniel and his three friends were deported to Babylon because of their courage and uh, the obvious blessings of God was of God was upon them. They're promoted uh, in the king's service. Uh, chapter two and three record Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar having a dream that only Daniel could correctly interpret and Nebuchadnezzar's dream of a great statue pre uh, represented the kingdoms that will rise in the future. And Nebuchadnezzar made a great statue of himself and forced everyone to worship it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused uh, and were miraculously spared by God despite being thrown into a fiery furnace. And that is where we are today in our lesson in the third chapter of uh, the book of Daniel. So how do we get here? Uh, I have to... Uh, not assume that you know history uh, of, of where, where this lesson came from. So it is my duty to give you uh, where we start and how we've gotten to this point. I think it's important. And as we, uh, I hope you enjoy where we're going along this journey. Next slide. So obviously we're talking about uh, this is God's people. who are the children of Israel, the house of Israel. And uh, the the Hebrew in the Hebrew Bible, the term Israelites or the children of Israel <clears throat> refers to the direct descendants of any of the sons of the patriarch Jacob, or the descendants of the people who are called Israel, and to a worshiper of God, of the God of Israel, which is Yahweh. Uh, and that's important that uh, these are the the patriarch Jacob. We'll get to that in a, in a moment as well. Covenant. <clears throat> 
So we had a long lesson, uh, a group of lessons on this covenant. And uh, I'm sharing with you a cell that I've used many times before that this term covenant <clears throat> is of the Latin origin, meaning uh, coming together. And it presupposes two or more parties who come to co come together to make a contract, agreeing on promises and stipulations and privileges and responsibilities. And, and, and not to belittle this whole concept of covenant, a covenant with God, <clears throat> because that's a serious thing that God, when God makes a prom uh, uh, a promise or our God makes a covenant with a uh, man, that it is a, a forever covenant, that God is not a man that he should lie, that God is, uh, m when God makes a, a, pr a promise with man, uh, he does it for a specific reason. So on the, this Mosaic covenant was a conditional covenant that either brought God's direct blessings for obedience or God's direct cursings for disobedience upon the nation of Israel. Again, God's covenants are forever. Amen. So another part of this lesson has to go back to this Deuteronomy 4. I, I cannot teach this lesson to you unless we understand how they've gotten to being dispersed in this um, this people and how did the, this Babylonian uh, uh, exile uh, came about. So we go back to Deuteronomy 4 when God promised this judgment upon his people. And he says, so in verse 23, so be on guard and watch yourselves. For you do not forget the covenant that the Lord your God, which is made with you, and make yourselves, and he, and he tells them, don't make any graven images, don't make any idols, but this people, they continue to do this regardless. He says, for your God is a consuming fire, and he is jealous and incompassionate. God is demanding what is rightfully and uniquely his. And that's that's only praise to him. That's only worship to him and not to some idol made of wood or stone. Amen. Verse 25. Uh, and when you become the father of children and grandchildren and have grown old in the land, and, and if you corrupt yourselves by making a carved or sculptured image in the form of anything for the purpose of worship, and do evil things in the sight of the Lord your God, provoking him to anger. Again, this is uh, uh, talking to this, uh, God's people. Provoking, I will call heaven and earth as a witness against you today that what will soon utterly perish from you, the land which you are crossing into the Jordan to possess. You shall not live long on it but will be utterly destroyed. Again, they're just going to go into the promised land. And, and he says that if you do this, you're not going to live long in the land, in that promised land that God uh, has promised them. Verse 27. And the Lord will scatter and disperse you among the peoples, those pagan nations. And he will be, and you will be left few in number among the nations where the Lord drives you. And there you will serve those false and foreign gods and work uh, and the work of human hands, those lifeless images, wood and stone, which can neither hear us or, 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 or eat or smell those offerings of food you've given them. Verse 29, from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him. And if you search with all your heart and with your soul, and when you're in distress and tribulation and all these things come to you in the latter days, you return to the Lord your God and listen to his voice for the Lord your God will is a merciful and compassionate God and he will not fail you nor destroy you nor forget the covenant with your fathers he swore to them and that's a promise he made to Abraham that is going to make them a great nation that even despite that they do all this evil and even when they get dispersed God still has a listening ear and he's going to restore them back to himself next line and, and and this is what happens to the 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 the, the northern tribes of of uh, um, of God's people. And in 722, the 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 northern tribes they 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 fell into idolatry and 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 they were they were scattered, just as uh, the Deuteronomy said. So 
<clears throat> again, how do we get here? And and maybe it's an overkill, but it's I I still say let's get. Uh, I'll give you how we've gotten here, and we started a creation, and and uh, obviously Adam and Eve sin, and 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 then the sin uh, permeated through throughout. Uh, uh, history and 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 it got to so bad that 1500 years after God made uh, made man and uh, and 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 he had to destroy all of man except for those six uh, with with uh, Noah and his family and and that was with the flood and and it, and then sin still became present uh, and 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 the folks even after uh, he had he had destroyed all men and restarted and sent them out to be fruitful and multiplied 175 years later they build an ark. I'm not building an ark. They build a tower of Babel, and, and God is still like I, I, he's he wanting to have a relationship with uh, with man, like he had with with Adam in the garden. But but ultimately, he calls a man an idolater, uh, an uh, an astrologer. This man Abraham, and he calls him out of the world, and he says that he's going to make him a great nation. And even in his old age, he says that he's going to make him a great nation, and he put his trust in in Almighty God. And and then we and, and then ultimately this. Uh, this man has these these patriarchs or those his descendants, the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and 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 ultimately that that Jacob has twelve sons, and 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 those twelve sons ultimately one of them is uh, the the one who will lead his people into into Egypt. He becomes one of the 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 most powerful men in the world of his day, and and the ultimate in Egypt for four hundred years. And God raises up a man, Moses, who is going to be one that's going to help them to leave uh, uh, Egypt. And there, there is an exodus. And there is an exodus that, 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 that God uh, gives uh, his people the power to leave uh, uh, Egypt under that, uh, uh, under that uh, opposition of those, of those Egyptians. They didn't want them to go. And, and now they, they leave Egypt. Uh, with the Shekinah glory of Almighty God, that the very presence of Almighty God is with them as they cross through the Red Sea and they go through the Red Sea into, into heading to a promised land, a land that was promised to that man Abraham. And they, and they, they leave uh, there and because of their, their sin, they should have went directly into the promised land, but they didn't believe Almighty God. God to showed them a peek into the promised land, and they, they went in, they looked, and they said, there's giants in the land, and they didn't believe that an Almighty God who took them out of Egypt and took them into, crossed the Red Sea. So they saw the miracles of Almighty God, but they didn't believe him, and they, and they you know, ultimately for 40 years, they went wandering, but God, she kind of glory was with them, and God gave them the law, and God gave them provisions, and he showed them that he's amazing and is awesome God. And ultimately, through Joshua, they enter into a promised land. But entering into the promised land, God said that you need to make sure that you root out all these people, those Canaanites are in the promised land, because they have gods in there, and, and their gods going to be a stumbling block to you, and they're going to send you into idolatry, and they wouldn't listen. And they did not root out those those all the people. They, they left those folks in there, and, and ultimately, their, their idols became a stumbling block to them. And then they entered to a period of judges and the judges would come to help God's people manage daily life and rule over the people. And, and those judges, they, they, they continually went back to sin and they continually fell into the idolatry and continually fell into trouble with their neighbors. And ultimately they sin and God would send them another judge and they go the cycle of sinning and God sends them another judge. And, and then ultimately this people wanted to have kings and, 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 and they saw kings around them in Egypt and, and the Syrians and they wanted kings too. And God lamented and let them have kings. And, and ultimately they have the king that they wanted who was Saul, but God had a one that he chose, who was with David, one after his own heart, and David had a son who was Solomon, and Solomon is the one who builds a temple where that Shekinah glory that was present with them all throughout this period of, of the wilderness and to the promised land and to this period of judges, and, and he builds a permanent resting place for God's Shekinah glory, and that's the temple of Almighty God. And there in Israel, and and there in uh, in this promised land that the this uh, that this man Solomon, one of the most wisest men in the world, and 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 and, but he had a problem too because he had these wives, and and many of them were the concubines that he had. That they 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 were uh, they had these pagan uh, gods as well.
And ultimately, because he he loved those women as well, that he ultimately allowed those 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 gods and those those idol worshippers to be a part of his life, and he even built temples to those uh, those gods of his his uh, wives. And ultimately, that becomes a stumbling block as 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 he dies, and then his his kingdom is is pulled apart by two men, one being his uh, mentor and one being his uh, mentee, and one being his uh, son. Jeroboam and Rehoboam, and ultimately that leads to this 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 northern and kingdom divi our division of this kingdom into the northern and southern div divisions, and and ultimately the northern kingdom, like I mentioned before, they fall because they they fall into idolatry. And we said back in Deuteronomy when they went into the Promised Land, and God said that don't, don't do, don't go and follow after these other gods. That 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 praise is only for him, deserving to Him, and He said if you do it, I'm going to scatter you. And God scattered the northern kingdom, and now over a few hundred years more that God finally now, because of the sins of this, the, even the southern kingdom, they continue in sin, even though God sends them prophets and he sends them prophets and tells them what to do and what not to do. And they go on through this period of, 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 of prophecies where, where God's trying to help them to modify their behavior because in Deuteronomy he said, if you follow after these, these idols, I'm going to scatter you. And ultimately, that's where we are today. That the fall of the southern southern kingdom occurs, and the and these this the the God's southern this Judah they're they're now going into Babylonian exile, and that's where we are today. And in 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 Daniel again, that occurred in five eighty six. And Daniel now is a prophet who speaks to this people, and God and, and also uh, uh, this is a earlier days of Daniel when he was a child, and that's how we've gotten to this point in our lesson today. And I know it's a lot, but it's how we've gotten here, and I think it's important. So these prophets of Almighty God are the prophet, the one who speaks God's word to his people, uh, uh, who have, in one way or another, distanced themselves from God. The prophet is a preacher; he's also a whistleblower. He tells them uh, that they don't what they don't want to hear, and uh, the prophets cover the pages of Israel's history. Moses was God's prophet, used to rescue the Hebrew people from slavery in Egypt and to lead them uh, to the land that God had promised them. And again and again, these people turned away from God. Moses was God's first mouthpiece to bring them back into relationship with God. In the Old Testament history books, prophets such as Deborah and Samuel and Nathan and Elijah and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Jeremiah, Nehemiah and Daniel and others came forward to speak God's word to a rebellious people. Amen. So, that brings us to Nehemiah 9, which leads us up to another of these prophets who, who foretold his people and told them to don't to stay with Almighty God, but they're disobedient again and again and again. And I told you that God sent those prophets and uh, despite God uh, showing them mercy for hundreds of years, they continue to went contrary to the way that God asked them to go. And find, now we find in Jeremiah 9, uh, verse 28. But as soon as they had rest, they again did evil before you. Therefore you abandoned them into the hands of their enemies so that they ruled over them. Yet when they turned and cried out again to you, you heard them from heaven. And you rescued them many times, times according to your compassion. Verse 29. And you admonished them and warned them to turn them back to your law. But yet, they acted presumptuously and arrogantly and did not heed your commandments, but sinned against your ordinances, which by keeping a man will live. If the man would keep his ordinance, you continue to live. But they turned a stubborn shoulder and stiffened their necks and would not listen. And then what happens to them in this period of time, the Holy Spirit left them. That Shekinah glory that was there when they when they went through the, the, the crossing of the Red Sea into that wilderness, into the promised land, and, 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 and now being resting in the temple that Solomon built, and, and now the Shekinah glory, the, the presence of Almighty God present there left them because that temple could not be destroyed and they could not go into captivity, not with God presence with them. And Ezekiel 10 and 18, the Holy Spirit left and the temple Solomon, that one that Solomon built was destroyed in 586 BC. And God finally sent them his people 
like he said in, in Deuteronomy, he says he sent them in the Babylonian captivity and, and scattered them for 70 years as he promised in Deuteronomy 4 and in Daniel 9, that's 70 weeks. And now they're slaves in their own land because of their disobedience. And that's how we've gotten to this point in our lesson today. So now we're in Daniel chapter 1. And uh, last week, and I'm giving you a lot of, of background, but last week I didn't give you a lesson, so I'm, 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 I'm kind of sandwiching two into one in some sense, but again, that is, is great background for this lesson today. After one summary, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, the of, uh, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into Jerusalem and besieged it. Verse two, and the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into the hand uh, with part of the vessels of the house of God and underline uh, Nebuchadnezzar and uh, those vessels on purpose which he carried into the land of Shinar, Shinar to the house of his God and he brought the vessels into unto the treasure house of his God verse 3 and the king spake unto Apenes, uh, Ash, Ashpenes the master of the eunuchs that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes the children who had who was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and coming wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding and science and such had the ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learnings and the tongues of the Chaldeans verse 5 and the king appointed them daily provisions of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king now among these were the children of Judah Daniel Hananiah Mishael and Azariah so who is this Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar was a, a Chaldean, a Chaldean king who ruled Babylon from uh, 605 to uh, to 562 BC. His name is a plea to the son of the Babylonian de deity of wisdom, uh, Marduk, and name uh, and means, O oh God, Nebu, preserve my firstborn. Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Solomon's temple, also known as the first temple, and he captured Jerusalem and exiled the people. In addition, he uh, to his conquest, conquest of Jerusalem, Nebuchadnezzar was the first Babylonian king to rule Egypt uh, when he defeated Pharaoh Necho. Uh, Egypt was a strong power through a number of years, and he ultimately beat them as well, and the Syrians as well. Amen. And those those vessels, those holy vessels that were mentioned in that uh, in that first part of uh, uh, this this chapter. Uh, was the uh, Ark of the Testimony, the menorah, the Ark of Incense, the Table of Showbread, the uh, Copper Basin, and the Copper uh, Altar. These are some of the uh, the vessels that are believed to, that were taken from the tabernacle of Almighty God. Amen. So Daniel 1, chapter 1, continue, and, and unto whom the princes of the eunuchs gave those names, those, those, those three gentlemen, uh, uh, those three young men gave to Daniel the name Belshazzar. I'm sorry, yeah, four. Uh, Belshazzar and Hananiah, the name Shadrach, the name Mishael, Meshach, and the name Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he purposed, I mean, requested, uh, of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself so daniel gives them a a plan and daniel chapter one continued ultimately and fortunately i mean fortunately i'm sorry i'm not fortunate fortunately god has mercy on daniel by making the palace master merciful and after persuasion from daniel he gives them permission to do a trial run for 10, day, ten days eating nothing but water and grains and vegetables which is more of a kosher meal uh, if they don't look worse than everyone else after that time then they can consider the next step 
to take. And after 10 days, they ended up looking better than the others eating the traditional Babylonian cuisine, which has probably included pork. Uh, and they, uh, and they're allowed to keep eating the appropriate kosher and vegetarian meals. And rather than collapsing from weakness, Daniel and his friends loaded up on wisdom and knowledge and skills and all provided by God. And Daniel also receives a gift from almighty God, the ability to interpret dreams and visions, which, which proved to be beneficial very soon. And then Nebuchadnezzar is finally calls in the elite Israelites after their training in Babylon, the ways uh, of the Babylonian ways uh, had been completed. And he discovers that no one is wiser than and knowledgeable than Daniel and his friends, that they're 10 times superior to all the Babylonian wise men as well. And this book of uh, this book notes that Daniel remained in Nebuchadnezzar's court until the first year of the Persian king. Uh, Cyrus reigned. I mean, he went all the way through uh, the, the reign of uh, Nebuchadnezzar that he was still uh, there. Next slide. Uh, chapter two. So uh, in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams which troubled and dis disturbed his spirit and interfered with his ability to sleep. Verse two. And when the king gave a command to all to call the magicians and encanters and sorcerers and the Chaldeans to tell the king uh, tell the king his dreams so they came and stood before the king and the king said to them I had a dream and in my spirit is troubled and anxious to know the content and the meaning of the dream and the Chaldeans said to the king in Aramaic O king live forever Tell the dream to your servants, and we will declare the interpretation. The king replied to the Chalde Chaldeans, uh, My command is firm and unchangeable. If you do not reveal to me the content of the dream, along with the interpretation, you shall not be, you should cut into pieces of your house be made into a heap of rubbish. Uh, the king's not going to be played. But if you tell me, the content of the dream, along with this interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and its interpretation. Verse seven, and they answered again, King, let King, uh, they answered again, let the King tell the dream to his, to his servants and we will explain the interpretation to you. <laughs> the King replied, I know for certain that you are bargaining for time because you have because you have seen that I command that my command to you is firm and irrevocable. But if you will not reveal to me the content of the dream, there is but one sentence for you. For you have already preparing lying and corrupt words. And you have agreed together to speak them before me hoping to delay your execution until the situation has changed. Therefore, tell me the dream first, and then I will know with confidence that you can give me the interpretation. And the Chaldeans answered the king and said, there is not a man on earth who can tell the king this matter, nor a king, nor lord, nor ruler has ever asked such a thing as this to any magician or in Cantor or Chaldean. Verse 11, furthermore, what the king commands is an unusual and difficult, a difficult thing indeed, and no one except the gods can reveal to the king, and their dwelling is not moral flesh. I mean, that own, not, not human beings can do this. Amen. And it goes on this, uh, they decide to go and, and, and get Daniel because they, they're unable to, to interpret this dream. And, uh, and, and, and Daniel now goes uh, and he goes to his um, to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And, and, and ultimately, uh, Daniel prays to God. And, and in the sleep, God reveals to him what that dream meant. And we fast forward to verse 27 and chapter two. And Daniel answered the king and said, regarding the mystery, which the king has inquired, 
neither the wise men, enchanters, and magicians, or astrologers were able to answer the, the king. But <clears throat> there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and has shown the king Nebuchadnezzar uh, what will take place in the latter days. This is what your dream and vision that appeared in your mind while you were on your bed, that God revealed to uh, Daniel what that dream meant. <clears throat> there was prophecy of future, uh, the future uh, dynasties that will that will come after uh, uh, this one Nebuchadnezzar that that the the golden head of this of this this statue was uh, his empire that he was the golden head the Babylonian Empire and then and this the silver uh, uh, torso is about this Medio Persian Empire that that we mentioned as Cyrus, who's a, the following king, and and then you t then there's this this bronze and and it's represented by this leopard, and because it, Alexander the Great is the one who who rises to power fast, and and ultimately his kingdom is divided into four by his four generals, and uh, and then ultimately this this iron. Uh, uh, empire is a Roman Empire, and, uh, and that's the longest-running empire of all of them. Uh, and it's it's of iron, and uh, and ultimately the, the the final is that the Antichrist, and the Antichrist is uh, his empire is made of this iron and and and, and clay, uh, not of much strength at all. But ultimately, these are the the kingdom that will will, will come throughout human history, following this uh, one Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. And we fast forward to verse 46. Daniel is promoted. And the king Nebuchadnezzar fell face downward and paid respect to Daniel as a great prophet of the highest God and gave orders to an offering and fragrant incense to be presented to him in his honor, in honor of his God. And the king answered Daniel and said, certainly your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of mystery since you have been able to reveal this mystery verse 48 and when the king promoted daniel to an exalted position he gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the entire province of babylon and, and the chief governor over all the wise men of babylon and and daniel made a request of his king that he and uh, appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Bab Babylon while Daniel was at the court of the king. And uh, and because he was uh, appointed, those wise men ultimately tried to set a trap for him, and that's why they went to this uh, fiery furnace. Amen. Next slide. And now it leads us into the Daniel chapter 3, where we are today. Uh, obviously, we are way down into Daniel chapter 3, so I have to give you the introduction and, and that will lead us into our Sunday School lesson for today. Daniel chapter 3, perhaps taking a leaf out of the disturbing uh, dream uh, vision, Daniel had interpreted. Nebuchadnezzar builds a giant golden statue and sets it up uh, in the plains near uh, Babylon. It's about 90 feet tall and it's, a, uh, it's one of himself. Those uh, those uh, jealous uh, men concoct this plan for uh, Nebuchadnezzar, hopefully to trap Daniel and his uh, and Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his reverence for Daniel, God apparently is evaporating. And Nebuchadnezzar gathers together the officials and VIPs from throughout Babylon, Babylonian Empire, and its different nations and language, and he invites them to come to the statue's dedication ceremony. And when everybody's assembled, they're ordered to bow down and worship the golden statue while the music stripes up and everyone else, uh, or else they'll be thrown into a fiery furnace. And apparently, everybody, everybody bows down as they're told. Well, almost everybody. <laughs> Some Babylonians attacked uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego for being disobedient and failing to honor the statue. Of course, they're not going to honor that statue. Next slide. Daniel chapter 3, uh, again, our lesson today is about this bold faith, and we'll see how they exhibit this bold faith. Verse 13, and the Nebuchadnezzar, in a furious rage, gave a command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and these men were brought before the king. 
Verse 14, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, it is, it, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you did not serve the God, my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Verse 15, Now if you're ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, and the pipe and the lyre, and the trapeze and the harp, and the, and the, uh, the, the, um, the mu sonar, do lumier, I forget what it is, it's like a horn, I think, and all kinds of music and fall down and worship the image which I've made. Very good. But if you're not worship, you should be thrown at once in the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. And what God is there who can rescue you out of my hands? Huh, right. Verse 16, Shirek, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> We don't need to answer you on this point. So be it so. Our God, whom we serve, is able to rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But, but, even if he doesn't, if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not doing, going to serve your gods nor worship the golden image that you have set up. So this idolatry is what got them scattered in the first place and, and they're being obedient to the word of God, obedient to the law. Amen. Now this brings us to our Sunday school lesson today. Unfortunately, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of background, but it's, it's so important to this lesson and I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of the lesson. Uh, we're reading again out of the Amplified, Amplified version, version, bold faith verses 19 through 21 that uh, it turns, turn up the heat. And when Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury and his facial expression changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, then he gave the command that the furnace was to be heated seven times hotter than usual. And he commanded certain strong men in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and get them, Abednego and throw them into the fire of blazing the furnace of blazing fire. Verse 21. And these three men were tied up. Their trousers, their coats, and their turbans, and, and, and their clothes. And they were thrown into the midst of the blazing fire. I'm not proud you provided you some graphics of that. Sunday school lesson. Daniel chapter 3. Bowl of faith. Verses 19 through 21. There's a commentary. And most figurative in the... In the most figurative sense of the word, word, Nebuchadnezzar was heated, right? Known for his emotionalism and anger, he was so upset with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, refused to bow down to the golden idol that his facial expression immediately changed and was made, and he, and he made an impulsive decision to throw the young men into the furnace. The furnace was most likely a lime furnace that had been, that had a tall chimney on the top for smoke and the window opening on the bottom for inserting fuel. People could be thrown in the top, which uh, would be extra hot because of the rising air and smoke. So hot that the guards would die. The king summoned the strongest guards to bind the three Hebrew boys and decided, uh, decided the furnace should be seven times hotter. Many times there is an expression, except, ex expectation that faith, integrity, and truth will vindicate us. But sometimes being on the side of justice, justice turns up the fire and increases the level of discomfort in our lives. Amen. Sunday school lesson, Daniel chapter 3, bold faith, verses 22 and 23, falling in the fire. Because the king's command was urgent, the fire was extremely hot. The flames of the fire killed the men who tied up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But these three, but these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell in the midst of the furnace, a blazing fire tied up. Amen. Still tied up. Sunday school lesson, Daniel chapter three. And Nebuchadnezzar the king looked, the king uh, looked and said, was astonished and he jumped up and said to his counselors, do we not throw three men who were tied in, 
who were tied up in the midst of the fire and they replied to the king oh certainly king he answered and look i see four men tied up walking around in the midst of the fire and they were not hurt and the appearance of the fourth is like the son of god that we thought we only threw in shadrach meshach and abednego but somebody else is in there amen so this is a, a commentary for you the king saw something unusual the boys were alive and walking in the fire in the furnace but he also saw something else there is a fourth man walking in the flames and some commentators say that there was a pre-carnate pre christ jesus before his incarnation and others interpret the fourth man as an angel have you ever escaped a very trying thing situation because you stood up for god hmm. so this is theophany or christophany this is one of uh, a few that occurred in the Old Testament. It's a non-physical pre-carnate appearance of Christ. Uh, in layman's terms, is Jesus showing up before he was born to Mary. Uh, these are important because they reveal the pre-existence uh, consistently. Consistence, consistency. Uh, we find uh, it happens in Genesis, Numbers, and 2 Samuel, and Kings, and Isaiah, and also in Daniel uh, 3, where we are today, and then also that occurs in and Daniel uh, 6 and 22 and in 22 my God has sent an angel to shut up the mouths of the lions uh, uh, so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him and also before you O king and I have committed no crime that's when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den that there was a, another one found in that lion's den with Daniel next slide Sunday school lesson Daniel chapter 3 uh, again bold faith uh, and then Nebuchadnezzar approached the door of the blazing ferns and said Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego servants of the most high God come out of there come here and Shadrach Meshach and Abednego came out of the midst of the fire verse 27 and the satraps and the perfects the governors and the kings and the counselors that gathered around them and saw that in regard to those men the fire had no effect on their bodies and their hair was not singed and their clothes were not scorched or damaged even the smell of smoke was not on them amen Sunday school lesson, Daniel chapter 3, bold faith, verses 28 through 30, out of the fiery furnace. And Nebuchadnezzar responded and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants, who believe and trusted in him and relied upon him. They violated the king's command and surrendered their bodies rather than serve and worship any God except their own God and therefore I make a decree that any people nation or language that speaks anything offensive against the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego shall be cut into pieces and their house be made in a heap of rubbish and there is no other God who is able to save in any, save in this way and then the king accused Shad, uh, a cause Shadrach Meshach and Abednego to proper to prosper in the province of Babylon that there is a decree made that their God their God is the Lord of righteousness their God is the God of peace their God is the sanctifier their God is the make, way maker the redeemer that is their God and that is no one speaks against their God next slide Sunday school lesson Daniel chapter 3 bold faith out of the fiery furnaces commentary out of the furnace the king calls Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and addresses them as servants of the most high God and he tells them to come out of the furnace after intense persecution the three are vindicated for their faithfulness to the God of Israel in the presence of the entire court including the officials that can condemn them the king acknowledges that the apparent that it what is apparent the Hebrew men sustain 
the fire amen sustain the fire unharmed they even they didn't even smell like smoke king nebuchadnezzar blessed the god of shadrach meshach and abednego this entire account was known as a fiery furnace in the christian tradition and it serves as an example of the unwavering faith of god's saving power that god has the saving power he's a saving god a redeeming god amen so what have we learned in this lesson today that we have shared that it's about bold faith? What have we learned that God's covenants are true and forever? That God, uh, when he made a covenant with those folks, he made a covenant that uh, that he was going to uh, disperse them despite what they um, did, that ultimately they were going to be judged for their sins. That, uh, But if we stand bold as they did, as a... As, uh, as, as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel did as well, that, they, that God uh, would uh, also help you in their, your, their circumstances. If you stand firm on your convictions during your calamities and put it in God's hand, he will work out your situation. And that's what they did. That when you add God to your problem, you have a winning, winning combination that uh, that if you you're in in uh, uh, circumstances you're uh, you you have a, a horrible things going on in your lives and if you pray and ask for God's help that you have a winning combination that you, that, that that God will fight your battles if you, that He says put my yoke upon you and learn of me and He said that He said that my yoke is easy if you if you give it to God God will will fight your battles if you don't have to be the one you can only fight up into the hands the length of your hands but if you give it to god 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 can fight a battle more greater than us god makes the illogical logical that sometimes you think that the seven times hotter are, 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 are the harder things in in our lives are that we we think that they're they're illogical to us but they're logical to god that the gifts of almighty god make a, uh uh that god gives us are awesome like in the case of uh the interpreting of dreams that Daniel got and also the gifts that we receive as as Christians as followers of the Most High the God's wisdom is ten times more su more superior than that of man and we saw that of uh, these uh, these young men that their their wisdom that God gave them was ten times more superior than that the man that God can promote you even during negative situations that in our lives that we can have the worst of circumstances and and sometimes out of the worst circumstances there comes uh, I think I, I taught a, a lesson before beauty out of ashes that that's so, that sometime God has beauty that comes out of the the most horrible things that happen in our lives that God's power can convert powerful men that 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 the powerful men they see the they see the power of Almighty God and 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 uh, and, and how God can redeem people out of the worst of worst and they, and they they recognize that their power is only what God has allowed them but they're uh, but God is the Almighty and not themselves. That we stand bold against idolatry because God has your back. That God is a jealous God. That these men that they stood boldly and did not serve that the gods of 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 Nebuchadnezzar. And they stood bold against that. If we stand bold against people who want us to to, to stand up against them and to, and to bow down to them, that we stand bold. That God's got our back. Our God's a jealous God. He says, "Don't do idolatry." And, and they're a representation of people of the of God's people that he didn't do it and God blessed them. We put God, put our trust in God. He can rescue rescue us from any adversity. Any adversity that we have that God can can rescue us from if we put our trust in and hope in him. Bold faith is what we have learned, right? That's our, our lessons today is about this bold faith. That even if our circumstances are ten times worse than normal, that God can protect you. So you don't even have, don't, so not even a hair on your head or your body is going to be singed. And we saw that in Job, that that all the problems that that that, that Satan threw at Job, that uh, God would not allow him to to, to harm him uh, to that point, and uh, would not allow him to take his soul. To, that that God is, has our back, and job, no matter what, uh, no matter how worse things can get, God is still God. Is that we call out to God? In our most difficult circumstances, he will show up uh, in the midst of it all. Even if we don't even see him. And we see that in the, in the footprints in the sand that we don't even know that God is the one that's, that 
um, that he carried us, that he was there and only one level of footsteps in the sand, that, that we have to recognize that calling off to God is, is, is uh, the only way we can get, uh, get ourselves out of certain circumstances. And we stand during, strong during opposition because our God can close doors that no man can open. And he can open doors that no man can shut as well. That, that God is a way maker and God is, is a one that gives and protects us if we put our trust and hope in him. And our God is a covenant keeping God. He gives us everlasting life. He says that if we believe and trust in our Redeemer, who is Jesus, that, that we have an everlasting life. We have everlasting life and we have uh, an eternal resting place with him. That we have the promises of Almighty God. That we have the ability to to speak to mountains and we they'll move. We have the ability to cast out demons. We have the ability to lay hands on the sick. We have the ability to 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 pray and ask a, an almighty God. A God who sits high and looks low and looks at our circumstance and, and we ask and he gives us the desires of our heart that all the promises of, of God in Christ are yes and amen that our God is a gift giving God. That he's given us gifts in order to navigate ourselves into a land where where Satan is dominant, that we we have gifts and we have weapons that gives us the ability to 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 make ourselves uh, uh, navigate ourselves through that. That that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, because we are we are children of the Most High God. That He's a redeemer of His people. That in the end of days, that uh, that He's going to redeem us all. And our God is an awesome God, and we we know that through this lesson that that Almighty God, He's He's he, he's the most powerful God and he shows us his power and might and majesticness in this in this lesson that's what we've learned here this lesson is about bold faith and we should learn to have our bold faith just like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and that's the lesson we've learned today that stand bold in the, in the face of opposition because we have one that's got our back and that's almighty God Amen and that is our Sunday school lesson for this week bold faith that uh our prayer, my prayer for you is that something you've learned today strengthened your faith. That if you learned something worthy of sharing, that you've enjoyed learning more about your faith, uh, about our faith in God and with boldness, that you're encouraged to learn with us and I ask you to hit the subscribe button. And I'll leave you with a benediction. Family Father, send us out with confidence in your word to tell the world of your saving acts to bring glory to your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Redeemer. In his name we pray and ask always. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. Amen.